We're coming down from some fast solar wind that bumped us up to storm levels, and more is on the way. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week continues to be a bit on the calm side. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, you can see that big crescent-shaped coronal hole. That has been sending us some fast solar wind over the past couple days, and it's bumped us up to storm levels and kind of kept us there for a day or so. But this region now is rotating off of the Earth-facing disk, and therefore things are beginning to calm down. But never fret, Aurora photographers. There is yet another coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here about in the next four or five days, and that could get us yet another burst of fast solar wind and more aurora chances. So just hang in there. Now also we have only three active regions on the Earth-facing disk right now, region 20, 30, 23, 24, and 25. Only region 30, 25 is a big flare player, but it's only a skosh of a big flare player. So things have definitely calmed down when it comes to solar flares and also solar flux. We're actually struggling to keep up into the triple digits, and that will easily continue over the next few days, possibly over a week before things begin to get a little bit better. Meanwhile, as we take a look at the far side of the sun, this is Stereo A, and it's staring at the sun just a little bit from the side. You can see all of the activity. It's just a lot of little puffs. Little puff, puff, puff. These are small little mini solar storms that are being launched pretty much every direction except towards Earth. And we do have a big bright region that looks like it's beginning to rotate into Stereo's view, but as it rotates into, into view, man, it looks like it's kind of fizzled out. So this might have been a big region uh, uh, about a, maybe a week ago on the sun's far side. In fact, I believe it launched a few solar storms but it looks like it's kind of lost its muster. And so as it rotates into Earth view, don't expect any huge boost in the solar flux. Oh, so for amateur radio operators and emergency responders, it looks like radio propagation is going to remain kind of just hovering in the triple digits. The nice thing means, however, is that there is not gonna be any risk for big radio blackouts. And now for your Leo Mio Geo Orbit Outlook. As we take a look at our low energy particle environment, these are the particles that can gather on the outside of spacecraft and cause surface charging and other types of electrical discharges. We can see it late on the 27th, we can see particle injections kind of beginning to build that flux up in geo as well as clear down deep into the MEO environment. In fact, we're beginning to see surface charging issues from our radiation clock, especially in the post midnight pre dawn sector. And this lasts easily through the 28th and by by the 29th, things begin to kind of settle down a little bit when these with these low energy particles. But when we flip to our higher energy particles, now these are the ones that cause internal charging they, because they can penetrate deep into the spacecraft and cause electrical upsets from the inside. Taking a look at these particles at 1 MeV, you can actually see right around the 28th, these particles actually get flushed. You can see that because the radiation belts here in this figure actually turns really blue. But very shortly thereafter, we begin to build those particles back up, and you can see the radiation belts beginning to get really intense. And this goes deep into the MEO orbits, cleared down at about two Earth radii, all the way out to GEO. And these uh, particles are going to continue to intensify over the next day or two. So you uh, satellite operators, especially in MEO and GEO orbits, expect internal charging could be an issue over the next few days. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the new moon phase on our way to a first quarter, and by the fifth, the moon will still be only about 30% illuminated. So Unite Sky Watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky and possibly some aurora, now is a great time while this bright companion of ours is not quite so bright. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are still coming down from that fast solar wind, from that big crescent-shaped coronal hole that's now kind of waning and rotating to the sun's far side. But we do have more chances later in the week for storming. In fact, at high latitudes, NOAA's expecting about active conditions as we begin to move into the weekend with up to about a 20% chance of a major storm. But this is probably going to up even higher and go into storm levels with a decent 
decent chance as soon as we get that new coronal hole rotating in through the Earth strike zone, which should happen sometime in the weekend. Now, at mid latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled conditions with only about a 10% chance of active conditions. But again, this is going to likely ramp up. We could easily see active conditions as we move into the weekend and possibly a chance for more storming. So Aurora photographers, definitely if you're at high latitudes, keep those batteries charged. And at mid latitudes, possibly if you are a determined Aurora chaser, could you go out and take a look? Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, believe it or not, everything is back into the green. And this is because we only have three minor uh, flare players on the Earth facing disk. The main one is region 3025 and NOAA is only giving it about a 5% chance of M class flares. And that means that radio blackouts really have been calming down and that should make GPS users very happy because the risk for radio blackouts on Earth's day side is pretty much nil. But what it also means is that the solar flux has also been taking a hit. You can see we're actually been hovering really right at the edge of triple digits. In fact, over the past couple days, we've kind of been dipping back into the high 90s for a little while. So these conditions are easily going to continue over this next week, especially as we only have very dim regions rotating into Earth view. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know, you're going to probably take a little bit of a hit in radio propagation, but things should still remain just on the hairy edge of good over this next week. Now, one nice thing is that because we don't have any major flare players, the proton or the radiation storm risk has really died down this week. So we're back in the D1 minor range. And this means even high risk passengers, you have no issues worrying about when and where to fly, especially if you're a frequent flyer, everything looks like it's all in the green. So the space weather this week continues to be a bit on the quiet side. We are calming down from that fast solar wind that brought us up to storm levels for a little while and gave us a dose of aurora. And aurora photographers just hang in there because we're going to have yet another chance for more aurora in and around the weekend when that another coronal hole rotates into the earth strike zone. So just especially if you're at high latitudes, you're going to get a good chance. But even down at mid latitudes, you could get a little bit. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, things are okay for you. You're probably enjoying the fact that we have less noise on the bands on, on the day side uh, at, of Earth right now, but sadly that solar flux is dipping down just a little bit. Sometimes we're kind of even in the high 90s instead of triple digits. So you're probably noticing radio propagation suffering just a little bit on the day side. Hang in there. We'll probably have another week of this and then things should really begin to build back up again. But of course, with that comes radio blackouts and more noise on the band, so who knows? Well, there's always a trade-off, isn't it? Now, you GPS users, well, you know, we've got it quiet down with that, that solar storm going away, and we don't have a lot of solar storms on the horizon, at least not really big ones, and that solar flux has dipped back down for you. So this is a pretty good time, and we have no worries for radio blackouts, and what that means is that GPS reception pretty much all around the globe should be top-notch. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.